Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and all-around snappy dresser and Santa Claus, part-time, meteorologist D.T. from WeatherRest.com, the Colonel of Confusion, the Captain of Catastrophe, the Commander of Chaos. It's 11 o'clock here in the East, 8 o'clock West Coast time. Let's talk this week in weather. Here I have a lot of topics to talk about here, well, a lot of points to make, only three particular topics. First, we're talking about the polar vortex. It seems to want to leave North America and go to Iceland, or does it? We'll talk about the big storms in the North Atlantic that this shift of the polar vortex in the Greenland is causing. We'll talk about the Midwest snowstorm coming up, the eastern U.S. weather, warm weather coming up, and the threat for severe weather in portions of the Delta and the Ohio Valley, I guess lower Mississippi Valley really, and then also the uh, t and pattern. What it is, what does it mean, and what does it mean for January? So let's get right to it. Now this is the upper air map from December 6th, all right? And uh, I want to point out some features here. Um, if you look on the West Coast, a lot of people think that this is a, a, uh, a that this is a, uh, I guess, a West Coast ridge, and it's not really. And uh, this is actually a Gulf Alaska ridge. It's not a West Coast ridge. Now it registers as a positive PNA if you look on all these different charts and indices we use, but it's not really a positive PNA pattern. There's a southeast ridge, and here's the trough. You see the trough is running from here to here. Okay, uh, not to the east coast, but from Canada into the southwest and the Rockies. Now. Uh, that is called a particular type of weather pattern. You may not be familiar with it, but it's important. Very powerful and significant weather pattern during the winter months. It's called the TNH pattern. It stands for Tropical Northern Hemisphere. Let's talk about it briefly for one second. You can look this up on Google you know, or CPC if you want to. Notice we have a ridge here. Again, notice where the ridge is. It's not on the west coast, in the Gulf of Alaska, and into Alaska. It's sometimes referred to as the Alaskan Ridge. And we have another ridge over the southeast, the infamous southeast U.S. ridge. And there's our vortex, which is centered here. And it runs down this way. You see it? Okay. That's the way it is. Now, when that sort of pattern is a good pattern for the New England and the upper Midwest, uh, but it depends on how that pattern shapes up for the rest of the country and the amplitude of it. Now, this is the pattern for all of December, where you had strong positive teenage patterns in December. You go back and you look since 1981 and uh, this is what you find. Now here's our big vor the dark blue, the dark purple area represents the vortex as you can see very clearly. And um, you can see it right in here. That's where the vortex is. See it? Right there. Now there's our ridge in the Gulf of Alaska. There's the southeast ridge. All right. That's the pattern for all of December. That's what it has been when you've had a strongly positive teenage. Now this is the current pattern, December 1st to the 15th. This, 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 this. Yes, it's the same pattern. Now, these maps come from Corey Lefcourt, an energy meteorologist with a private hedge firm in, uh, in Oklahoma, who came across this information and showed it to me, so I want to make sure he gets credit for it. But you can see it's a very similar type of pattern. Now, this sort of pattern is uh, where well, the storm track runs like this, right between the dark blue and the green areas. That's your mean storm track, okay? Now, as you can see, that's pretty good for places like well, New England, interior, northeast Pennsylvania, New York State, Midwest. But if you're in Maryland or Pen uh, Virginia or West Virginia, or Delaware, North Carolina, that's a crappy pattern. But it's December. That's not your main snow pattern anyway. Your snows don't come till later in the season. So there's no reason to be too worked up over it. Now, this is a chart of the Arctic Oscillation. As you can see, only one time since the season, since November 1st, have we been even briefly negative. It's consistently been positive. Now, this is the actual December 18th hemispheric shot. I got this from the Plymouth server site. And you know, I, I highlighted this so you can see exactly where um, uh, the vortex hex is located here. So let me change colors for one second. We'll go here. You can see this huge vortex area in here. There's one center here and another center here. Now, these are going to split. This one's going to go here, and this is going to come in. If the entire vortex were to slide towards Scandinavia, or the United Kingdom, this would be very bad for winter weather lovers and snow lovers in the eastern half of the country. But that's not what's going to happen. Instead, it is going to split. Now, this is today's GFS map, and you can see, again, the vortex very nicely. Um, there is, uh, you can see one center here, and the other center is right here. And there's a the next piece of energy. Okay? So that's the current map. And now, if we go to December 10th, well, we can see, again, that uh, we have a, our, our our there's one center here, you see it? There's the other center, now in Iceland, and there's our next piece of energy coming down this way. 
And that's what's going to cause things to go crazy here over the next few days. Because now this is the large shot of the North America, not a hemispheric shot. And you can see there's a piece of energy. Now this is going to come this way, but as it swings down, the atmosphere has to counter it. Remember, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as this comes down this way, this comes up. We got a big ridge here, and we have a very warm pattern and significant snowstorm for the upper Midwest and severe weather for the lower plains and Mississippi Valley, and it gets crazy. You'll see in a second. Uh, that There's the system. You see it digs down to New Mexico. And as a result, here's our southeast ridge. Uh-oh. And this is all warm up in here, 70s. And, the, and then we, here's our big low coming up this way. And the low tracks this way, just south of Chicago, very close to Chicago. All the, all the, here's our cold air source in here, so this is all snow up in here. But a lot of rain for the Mississippi Valley on the east coast. And you can see that very nicely here. This is, her, this is the surface map. And this is valid the 22nd of December. There's our low. You can see it very nicely right here. See the low. Okay, and then here's our fronts. This is the cold front right up in here, and there's our warm, that's the warm front, there's the cold front, I should say. There's the cold front, and here's a warm front. And look at those cold air up in here. Wow, very impressive. Um, Chicago looks like right now rain. Yesterday it looked like all snow, but Des Moines looks like a pretty big snowstorm, so we'll see. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. Let's do this again. Now, if you look at the European model, it's showing a lot of snow here for the uh, Midwest, up into northern New England. Uh, this is the operational run. The ensemble, pretty much the same thing. Very consistent here. Significant snow, even at the Chicago. Um, but um, if you look at the GFS, it does not have that snow in Chicago. And it's got it over with uh, some snow in Wisconsin and Iowa, northern Missouri and Kansas, but not as much. And the ensemble is even less snow. So there's a bit of discrepancy with regard to the snow mounts. With the actual storm itself, look at the rains here over Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois. See the brown stuff? That's four inches. See this brown stuff in here? That's here and here. That's uh, four inches, folks. And then again, this is, this is through December 23rd. A lot of rain for the Ohio Valley and eventually into the East Coast. But And now, again, when the cold front comes through, the temperatures will tumble. But uh, on the East Coast, temperatures may step around 60 degrees on the night of the 21st into the 22nd. Now, this is uh, afterwards. This is December 24th. So now the cold air has moved back into the eastern United States. We can clearly see that. And uh, <clears throat> there's the high, as you can see right here. There's the Arctic front like this coming southward. But again, all the cold air is in here, and it's going to disappear. And that's, the in fact, look how warm it is over the Plain States. Now, this is the day seven uh, hemispheric shot. And uh, you can see the vortex is, is into this. Two sections to the vortex. Uh, there's... Um, one section here, and the other section's over here. So they're going to split. This one's going over to England. This one's going to stay back. And again, if you're a winter weather lover, you want those things to split. And this is the operational European. And the only reason I'm pointing this out, you can see it very nicely here. There's the vortex. Here's our Alaskan ridge. And there's our next piece of trouble coming down the pike, potentially. Now, some people are getting excited about that system. Uh, you can see this is the North America map. And you can see... The European showing the system very nicely, a big system in the southern stream. There's your cold air coming south again, cold air in the eastern United States. Here's our war, big polar vortex. But this is still not a good snowstorm pattern for the eastern United States. We still have a positive Arctic oscillation. We still have a positive NAO. I'm not that impressed. Now, this is as of uh, December 26, day 9. And again, we can see very nice a high coming uh, right here over Minnesota and a new Arctic front coming this way. But again, the really serious cold air is staying up over eastern Canada because of the polar vortex. And this is the day eight and a half, day nine map. We can see uh, two systems here. And again, folks are getting excited over these, but the polar vortex is too far east. So it means a hostile pattern, in my opinion, for an east coast snowstorm. And then uh, this is, uh, excuse me, this is day 10, the upper air map. Same thing. So uh, we'll see, but right now I'm not that impressed. And then this is the service map. Day 10, you can see. Now look at the high, folks. Look where that high is. The high's over here. And once it's gone, look at all the warm air in this area coming east. Not a lot of cold air there for an east coast snowstorm, i got to tell you that. So folks need to look at a little reality here. And um, now if you look at the uh, upper air map, the in terms of the uh, cold air, where's all the cold air? Again, it's with the polar vortex. The cold air is with the vortex. The cold air is with the vortex over here in eastern Canada. Not much in this area, folks. 
that's what I want to get across to you. If you look at the actual trend, the Arctic Oscillation gets down towards neutral, which we've seen before, but not negative, not yet negative. So until it does, I'm skeptical. Now, if you look at the actual implications of this, when the Arctic Oscillation, remember we said how far east it is. Uh, let me actually go back to here, uh, a couple of maps so you can see how far east it is. You see how far the east of Vortex is here at day 10 and then even beyond that? We go back to here. You can see how far to eastern Canada. That's having a big impact on these storms in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. Look at this baby from December uh, 12th. 942? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Holy mackerel. That's a monster. And then the next one. This is the current one. Look at this one right here. This is the current one for today. Hitting Ireland and Scotland. 952. Holy mackerel. These are impressive storms. Why? Because they're interacting with the polar vortex. A piece of it has broken off and moved towards into Greenland and Iceland, and it's interacting with these systems and it's making them explode. Very, very impressive looking uh, stuff here going on. Now, there's uh, more behind this. This is the European from yesterday, and it showed a huge storm hitting Christmas Day, Ireland and northern Scotland and Wales. Really tremendous winds, as you can see, or winds to 85 knots uh, just above the ground. 900 millibars. This is very bad Christmas for somebody, if this is true. This is the new European. Now, this one here is for December 19th. It has one storm uh, over here. Monster storm hitting Iceland, 939 millibars. Very impressive. But the other ones of the European, there's our system, December 24th, 930 millibars. Are you kidding me? Wow. And then on Christmas Day, Christmas night, the thing splits in the two and hits England and Wales and Ireland directly. That's a very bad Christmas night. Now, what about January 13th? What's going on? The MJO shows signs of waking up. We'll look at the CFS trends and the positive uh, TNH for January. There are some indication that the MJO might be waking up. This is from the Albany site. The use of the CFS, they show the uh, uh, MJO moving into phase seven by mid-January, then potentially into phase eight and one and two by late January and February. Uh, not a lot of support for this, but if this happens, this would be significant. You can see that again in phase. Um, in phase eight, it's very cold in the east. In phase one, it's cold in the east. In phase two, it's cold in the east. So these are all significant changes if that happened. We haven't had a big MJO impulse in a long time. We'll see. Now, in regards to the CFS, you know, back in December, when the pattern was very warm, the CFS was showing a warm January. Well, see up in here. But then we got to mid-December uh, when the pattern turned cold, and now the CFS was showing a cold pattern. Say this look, December 4th, we were warm then. We were warm back here. And sure enough, it was showing a very warm January. Then December 12th, when we were cold, it showed a cold January. So um, that's, you know, and then if we go beyond that, now the new one, now it turns warm again because the polar vortex, look on December 18th right here, the polar vortex is now leaving the North America, so the model now sees a warm pattern for January. So the CFS, the monthly, has not been really helpful here. So with the Arctic Oscillation still positive, the NEO very positive, uh, why has the pattern been so cold? Well, we've had the Bering Sea block and the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is the day 10 map, and you can see the polar vortex is over Greenland and uh, Baffin Island here. Uh, this looks pretty flat. There's not a lot of cold air coming in here. So is the pattern breaking down? Some people speculate the cold pattern might be breaking down. I don't think so. You can see now the, east, the Eastern Remember these things before right here? All this stuff, these were way down in here before. Remember how negative? Now look at the neutral. The neutral. So again, people are worrying, oh my God, Dave, is the pattern breaking down? It's not. This is the ocean water temperatures, and the, this ocean water temperatures right in here are 4 degrees centigrade uh, above normal. That's like 7 or 8 degrees Fahrenheit. And this water here is powering the pattern. So unless that cold water goes away, the cold pattern is not going away. It may relax, but it is not going away. So that's what you have to watch out for to see if that pattern breaks down. And if we look at the textbook positive TNH pattern, and again, this is a reminder of what we saw for December 1st to the 15th. What does that look like? For January, it looks like this. What happens is that whole vortex comes further south, and the whole pattern turns dramatically colder into the Midwest and the Northeast, and the Southeast ridge gets pushed to the south. Now, it, it, this, what the, this, it, assuming the positive TNH pattern holds, this is the most favorable winter pattern you get. Without, you know, in the eastern U.S. for a winter storm without a negative Arctic Oscillation. The vortex gets displaced south, the southeast ridge gets displaced to the south, and the storm track runs from Texas to North Carolina, and this is a pretty good storm track for everybody. This is meteorologist D.T. from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.